Hi guys, welcome to the Thinking Crypto channel. I hope you're doing well. On this channel, we cover the crypto news and we interview many of the people who are building and investing in the asset class. So if you're new here, hit that subscribe button as well as the thumbs up button. Guys, we got confirmation that the Bank of Japan will begin experimenting with a digital yen. This is big news because we've been following closely what the Chinese have been doing with their digital yuan and the US with the digital dollar. But we know, guys, all of these central banks around the globe are starting to build their CBDCs, also known as central bank digital currencies. And they see the disruption which Bitcoin and cryptocurrency have caused, and they're trying to get ahead of that. Well, at least catch up, I should say, because people are going to opt out if they don't make the money digital. So let me give you the details. The Bank of Japan announced on Thursday that it would experiment with a CBDC to check its feasibility from a technical perspective. I think this is kind of a, uh, you know, this was worded in a way of, oh, we're only going to test it out, guys. Get out of here. We know they're going to build it. And that's why it's a global currency race right now. That's why China is trying to win this race as much as possible. We've seen the World Economic Forum and uh, the IMF and many others have put out central bank digital currency policy maker toolkits. They're encouraging it. All of the big associations, the Bank of International Settlements, all of these folks, IMF and so forth, have been talking to all the countries. They all met in Davos and they're looking to build it out. You guys may have seen my interview with Algorand COO Sean Ford, where the Marshall Islands are going to use the Algorand blockchain to build their CBDC. So you have small countries, big countries, superpowers that are going to build this out. It's coming. So the experimenting part is just a cover, guys. We know it's coming. So the BOJ wants to digitize cash, but it remains to be seen if Japan can catch up with China which has already begun testing its own CBDC. This is the first time the BOJ has revealed it would commence a proof of concept process with the digital yen. The bank is yet to reveal a timetable. Oh, yeah, they're now letting us know about it, but guess what? They've been doing it like forever. So the BOJ stands for Bank of Japan. Um, so all of these central banks are doing it, guys. They're, they're getting it all built out. They're doing their testing, their trial and error testing, but it's coming in a report called Technical Hurdles for CBDC, the bank stated it would check the feasibility of CBDC from a technical uh, perspective, uh, collaborate with other central banks, collaborate with all the central banks and relevant institutions and consider introducing a CBDC or oh, whatever. They, we know they're going to do it because no one wants to be left behind, guys. So, they, 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 you know, all this words is like, oh, yeah, you know, we're thinking about it, but, you know, it's a high priority. And the news, it's if you look at it from a macro perspective, they've been talking about it for a long time. But once the World Economic Forum and the IMF put out the standard and the bar is being set here, guys, all of these central banks are going to get on board. So now we're getting details from the Japanese here. And like I said, the U.S., they are trying to get this going. Guys like Chris Giancarlo, and, uh, obviously Senate and the Congress, they've been meeting about it. And we know China, I think, is leading the race here. And we've seen, guys, screenshots leaked on Reddit where people are seeing uh, apps where you can use the digital yuan. So it's coming. So what what's the benefit of all this? Well, it's going to further validate the crypto market. It's going to help people to understand that money can be tokenized on the blockchain, not just in a digital format. Money's been digital for a long time, right? But the idea that a US dollar in a sense of a token um, and on the blockchain and how that is set up can be, it, 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 it's real. And that further validates Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. Now, I believe... And this is based off of facts. This is going to benefit XRP. And once again, I'm going to show you facts. In this document from the World Economic Forum, this is not some random YouTuber or Twitter person or somebody on Reddit. This is an official document here from a well-known organization. Like I said, they all met in Davos earlier this year. If you search for XRP in this document, it says most relevant for a wholesale CBDC. XRP, crypto assets designed for inter or intrabank payments and settlements. XRP. This is from the World Economic Forum, guys. This is not BS. This is not hype. These are facts. It's right in front of your face. Regardless of if you like or love, hate XRP, it's right here. And obviously, they mention global available cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin and Ethereum. So they recognize once again 
the disruption that's taking place and they need these central banks and all the governments to get on board to build the CBDCs. And I believe this is going to have increased interoperability with fiat and crypto and digital assets and it's going to benefit XRP. Why XRP, guys? XRP is, of course, that uh, bridge asset, that bridge asset for all the different fiat currencies to communicate with each other, to settle instantaneously. Here's a tweet from Ripple's Deliberoa. Regional interoperability of payments in APAC needs a cross-border real-time liquidity solution. CBDCs will suffer the same fate as fiat currencies, so only a neutral bridge like XRP on a licensed compliant network of FIs, financial institutions, makes sense. You're still going to have the wall gardens, right? How does the euro talk to the US dollar and to the yen and to the yuan, right? Even if it's put in a uh, digital format. So that's where I believe XRP is going to benefit even more with the fiat being digital. Now, additional facts, right? We've seen Brad Garlinghouse reference this calling for regulation in the United States, saying we need to get this going or China is going to grab a hold of crypto and fiat uh, and digital currencies, right? And he understands, guys. They, they know. That's why they tweeted about it. They talk about it, CBDCs and the uh, impact uh, that's going to have and how much XRP is going to be needed here to be that bridge asset. And who have we seen Brad hanging out with, guys? The people from the IMF, Ross Lacow. Here you got Brad and uh, Ross Lacow. We've seen him meeting with Ross Lacow and uh, Christine Lagarde and all these people. So these are the facts. I'm not making it up. They are trying to, here's Brad, by the way, they're trying to essentially position themselves to show these central banks, guys, right now using SWIFT, it's outdated. It's irrelevant. We need to be uh, in, the, in the modern day and move money as fast as data and settle instantaneously. That is what XRP is being used for and, and how ODL works, Ripple ODL. So that is why I'm bullish on XRP. That is why it's the number one in my portfolio. That does not mean I hate Bitcoin like the XRP maximalist. I believe Bitcoin's going to do well. Even the people from Ripple say they're bullish on, on Bitcoin. And I believe Ethereum and I diversify. Algorand, which is being used to build um, the Marshall Island CBDC. Uh, obviously, VeChain, very bullish on VeChain and Tezos and so forth. So I diversify to reduce the risk in my portfolio. Um, obviously, I'm very bullish on XRP. That's why it's my largest holding here in my portfolio, as you can see. And I think big things are ahead. And the CBDCs are being built and primed and will be set up for usage uh, for cross-border payments and so forth using XRP as a bridge asset. Uh, some bullish news here, guys. Bitcoin 90-day active supply soars to pre-2017 bull run level report. An on-chain metric which has been declining since 2017 is now signaling a bullish trend, analysts from the Stack Fund say. So we've I've shared some other reports with you guys showing some metrics and stats uh, indicating that we are in that cycle again of the accumulation phase heading into that bull uh, market. And of course, the Bitcoin halving just happened. So uh, I don't think anything major is going to happen this year. I think next year. But, you know, as the price keeps steadily going up, I'm happy with that. And uh, we are waiting for that next run up, guys. And I believe Bitcoin's going to do very well. Once again, I am not an XRP maximalist. I'm bullish on XRP. But as an informed, as a smart investor, I diversify to reduce the risk in my portfolio. So this is great to see the signals um, trending the same way as we saw in 2017. And I hold Cardano in my portfolio. I haven't been accumulating much of it lately because I was waiting to see, are they going to make their upgrades? Are they going to execute on their upgrades? They were able to do the Shelly upgrade, um, and I'm waiting to see who else they're going to be working with. But Cardano uh, may be listed on Coinbase before the end of 2020. What happens to coins listed on Coinbase? We see a pump. So <laughs> I'm going to start accumulating, not financial investment advice, but we shall probably see it pump a bit and uh, certainly looking for some short-term returns there. I am holding Cardano long-term. I'm more bullish on Ethereum, but uh, like I said, diversifying because we don't know what's the future hold, right? Um, as bullish as I am on XRP, what if Ripple as a company fails? You got to think like that as an investor. There's no certainties. There's no absolutes. People almost think like, oh, I know Ripple is never going to fail. I know XRP is never going to fail. Oh, really? Can you tell me the lottery numbers for next week so I can go become a millionaire? 
you can't do it. You can't predict the future. You got to be smart here. Uh, I diversify into other asset classes like gold and so forth, guys. So that's just me. I hope you guys understand that. That is how Warren Buffett, all these other guys think about it. They don't hold one single asset or stock or something, right? They diversify. You got to be smart about this. Now, Bittrex CEO joins StormX board after undisclosed investment. So we continue to see the mergers, acquisitions, investments, which is a great sign of the building uh, and expansion of the market. Bittrex CEO Bill Shihara will expand his role at cashback rewards platform StormX from investor to board uh, member. Now, Bittrex is a crypto exchange, of course. They are a Ripple ODL partner. So I'm trying to get an interview with Bill and uh, to get you guys some more details. But it's great to see that um, he's uh, you know investing and they're expanding. So certainly the rewards part of this crypto asset class is going to be big, right? Because they're going to tie it back to earning crypto and spending your crypto and earning crypto and all that. So this is great to see. Um, guys, what, what do you think about this news? Um, it looks like all these central banks are moving ahead with their CBDCs. And like I said, I think that's going to benefit XRP based on the facts, not hype, not speculation, but clear facts from the IMF, clear facts from the World Economic Forum here. Leave your thoughts and comments below. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll talk to you all later.